Welcome to my Transport Fever 2 mini-series, The Making of Northumbria, where I'll try to show you how to recreate a real-world long-abandoned railway branch line in Transport Fever 2. So the big question, I suppose, is how do you make a real-world map for Transport Fever 2? Well, <laughs> obviously, you go to the City Skylines height map generator. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> Well, it's the, not the same game, but... Oh, don't do that, though, because... Oh, Right-click, Stephen, you don't right-click. OK, what you do is you left-click in the area that you want, and you end up with the familiar City Skylines 9 by 9 square. Hmm, uh, how is that of use to us? OK, what size map were we making? Uh, it was a medium... And it was 1, 1.3, 1, 1 to 3, yep. So that's 6.5 by 19.5 kilometres height. Right, 19.5 kilometres high. How high is that? 17.2. Uh, righto. OK, uh, 19.5 then. Yep, 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 19.5. Oh, almost. Right. 19.5 kilometres, so these nine squares are now 19.5 kilometres high, right? You don't want all of these nine across here though, do you? Correct, I only want a third of them, the right hand third in fact. One, two, three, those ones there. Oh okay, alright, uh, does that cover everything you want covered? Let's have a little zoom in and have a look. Uh, we have Rothbury up the top, right? And we follow where the Morpeth Rothbury rail line goes, which is that yellow line, which comes down uh, and veers off there along the road. But if we keep following the grey, yes, we have Brinkburn Station here, and that's within our right hand boundary. Good. Follow it around, keep following that grey line down, and you've lost it. I have, haven't I? Ah. Uh, gets a bit messy through here. Did he do follow that road? Probably. And down and around. Yes. Alright. Keep going. Yep. Yep. We're in the right spot. There's Fontburn Reservoir. Good. Keep coming. Uh, and around past Usley. Yes. And around to Longwitten. And here are the lakes at Rothley. Yep. Okay. It gets a bit curly here. But it, I know it comes down here. Right. And then straight down straight down right and then curves around and comes out right oh it's showing as the wani line well it isn't is it this is the wani line down here duh no no this is not the wani line but are we still within our three tile boundary one two three there's the edge of the third tile good good okay we come down to scott's gap yes and we follow it a little, it goes that far, to the edge of the three tiles. But we follow it this way, and along this grey line to Middleton, there, right. And keep following it, and it disappears off the face of the earth. But that's fine, we can pretend that Morpeth is somewhere over here. So that's our height map. Cool. What do we need to do with this? Well, uh, okay, uh, hit refresh, now that you've got the right spot, okay. Minimum height is 51 metres, so your base level, 51 metres I gather, that's it, change that. Oh, that took forever, <laughs> 51. Alright, height scale, right, water depth, water blah, blah, draw streams, yes, definitely tick draw streams. And tick these other two over here because they will help you. Um, probably not so much this one, show water contours, but this one here, show height contours, will help you when you're using this map to see the 10 metre height intervals. Roger. Okay. Now what? We're almost there. Oh, good. Good. Uh, this one. Second button. Download PNG height map. Click it. Oh good, heightmap.png, that's it, it's in the downloads folder, but, oh, there would be a but, wouldn't there, yes, there is, oh, 
What did you do? Oh, I moved it. Didn't I? I clicked in the wrong spot. So, I'll, lucky I have these longitude and latitude figures remembered. <sighs> Hopeless. Well, that's so that I can go back and <laughs> recover from stuff-ups like that. Okay, uh, what were you about to say? Uh, the height scale, right. Now, I know from experience, yes, that we need to, ooh, maybe not 199, uh, we need to have, to try anyway, a couple of different variations on the height scale. We need a little bit of vertical exaggeration when we're creating these maps, mm -hmm. so that in the map editor it actually looks like there's hills and valleys, because at 100% with flattish country, which this sort of is, uh, I mean, there's not much variation here. At 100%, you may not even be able to see the hills and the valleys and so on. So, right, ready? Uh, let's hit refresh again. Right, okay. And download the map again. Sure, do it. Good. We have two. Good stuff. Let's have a look at the downloads. No, you don't want to look at that one. You want to look at the one in the finder. Okay, here we are good uh, height map this was the first one was height map at 100% right the second one was height map at 150 150 right now what okay these are the two height maps we'll be using we need to doctor them because because we only want the right hand third we don't want the left hand two thirds we only want that long strip. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we'll come over to open these, yes, in, oh my gosh, yeah I know, uh, this is in for my Mac, the graphic converter, uh, it's a program I've been using for over 20 years, I love it, but there are various image editing programs that you can use. What we've got here is a grayscale, yeah, that's black and white, yep, uh, 1081 by 1081 square image, right? That's the wrong size, isn't it? It is. It needs to be how big? It needs to be that high, 49.93, alright, I'm going to copy that, because my memory's terrible. Okay. So we're going to scale this up, we're going to resize it, we're going to scale it, so that it is uh, 49.93, well that didn't work did it? Okay, 49.93 square, good, says so, yes, and now back to here, it needs to be 1665 wide with graphic converter we can change the canvas size okay I there'll be something similar in your program that you're using what we're doing is we're positioning on the exact same spot on the right hand side and we're making it 1665 wide was that it I hope so uh, no oh poo all right well undo it what did you do wrong? Um, it didn't do the 49.93. Well, that's a point. Uh, 49.93. Is that right? 16.65 times 49.93. Was it 49.93? I don't know. Yes, good. <laughs> this is pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, well, all right, we'll just save that. And we'll open the other one. Oh, good. And we'll do the same thing to it. Oh. Uh, um, 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 uh, 49.93 high. Yes. Okay. And then canvas size. Did it remember it? It did. Oh, well, that's 45.93 and save. Good, oh. That, um, that, that, uh, certainly 
was a little bit easier the second time around. <laughs> I know, I know. And what have we, what have we got here? Well, you've got uh, something that is, um, yeah, computers can read that. This one, uh, because we had some vert vertical exaggeration, it's slightly lighter because the higher areas which have been exaggerated are lighter. All right, what do we do with them? Glad you asked. Next thing you have to do, back over to here, is to find where your user data folder is. And if you go to the Transport Fever 2 wiki, it will tell you, depending on what computer you're using, this is where they are. Uh, so, over here, uh, right, over here, Library, Application Support, Steam, User Data, that's me, that's the game, that's the local folder, and that's the height maps folder. Good. So you simply grab those, yes, and drag them to that. That's it. So step one, make the height maps. Step two, edit the sizes of those height maps. Step three, plonk them in that folder. And we're now ready to get into Transport Fever 2 Map Editor and do stuff with them. Oh, and more kookaburras. Good on you guys, good on you. I'm glad you're entertaining us while we're um, waiting for this to load. This is, of course, the Deluxe Edition. I've done this a thousand times before with the previous edition. This is the first time with the Deluxe Edition trying to create this map. So, hopefully, it will work. Medium, yes. One to three, yes. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you set these to at this moment. Uh, settings, uh, again, no, forget it. Doesn't matter. Um, yes, it does. We'll do it on temperate. Beg your pardon. Temperate, all English, tropical, no. Temperate, temperate, difficulty. Yeah, you can change all of this later. But for now, let's go. And a few minutes later, the very familiar flat. Boring. Oh, we have an animal though. Hello, what are you? Uh, hello, bear. Nice to have you with us. Right, we're in the map editor. What now? Well, now we've got to import. See, that button there says height map. We have to import our height map right but uh, but yep we need to change the range figures here first okay to what well come back over to here minimum height 51.1 uh, well that was for the whole map I know and the maximum height is 435 which is also for the whole map which is over here so <clears throat> We need to find the minimum height for our area, our three things. Uh, right, that'll be where a river roughly is here, surely. Uh, so this is 190, 80, 70. So say 70 metres there on that edge. What about the other river down a bit further? Uh, 70 metres, 70 metres. Here, you mean? Uh, probably. Uh, can we get a can we get a reading on one of these contour lines? 150, 40, 30, 20, 10. Well, that's higher. That's about 110. So 70 is the lowest. Sounds good. Uh, there and the highest point. I know this is in one, two, three. Is in the top of there actually, but we're not there because that's outside the third square. Are the top of Mount Healy. No, it's not Mount Healy, because that's over here. This is even higher. 300, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 350, 350, 60, 70, 80, 90, 390. Let's just say 400. Okay, that's our range. 70 to 400. Right. 70 to 400 yep and we're doing the 100 
percent one first are we sure let's do it okay let's go are we going I don't see anything it takes a while give it a chance um, um, hello bear you're still there um, no doesn't look good at all you want to do that again just in case uh, not really but height map that one yeah yeah yep 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 import yes ah oh, I thought the game had been nerfed uh, you're not the only one right okay so what happened the first time I don't know I don't think I hit the button hard enough okay so what are we looking for here uh, recognizable land form features oh yeah well good luck with that this is pretty um, pretty uh, not pretty um, okay what can we see we can see a river yeah a river that's that gray bit there which disappears here uh, well, this is supposed to be my starting point with the lake. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And, um, there's supposed to be a hill here. Uh, here? Uh, uh, that's, that doesn't work, does it? Um, let's come up where the river was. Let's see if we can see some sort of recognisable valley shape um, yeah. well considering uh, in the various descriptions that I've had this area where the train line comes through is supposed to be 100 feet or 90 to 100 feet above here that's 30 meters so that's 78 77 this needs to be uh, no well, what are you going to do about that? Because that's that's that makes it a bit hard, doesn't it? Yes, I know. Um, all right, what are we going to do? We are going to go back to the import button. All oh, righto, and try the other one. Now, see the difference in the colours here. Okay. All right. This has got the vertical exaggeration applied. Yep. Import. What? Well, something happened. Oh, did it really? Uh, did it? I think that looks a little steeper. Oh, what are you looking for now? Uh, well, we can see where the river goes vaguely, where the streamline is along the bottom of the valley. Oh, this is going to be fun. Not really. No, it took me quite a few hours. <laughs> Several hundred, in fact. Okay, somewhere down here is the reservoir. Here we go, look at this. There's the front wall of the reservoir. Yeah. There's the outline of the reservoir behind it. Right. And here's the valley in front of it. Now this valley here is meant to be about 60 feet or 20 metres lower than the reservoir, which is... 130 meters, so this should be 110. It's 120. Uh, hmm. I think more vertical exaggeration is going to be needed. Hang on, let's one last little look down here. Can we find the lake? Uh, I don't know. Can you find the lake? How did that hill, right up the top that you measured, okay, here, how high is it? You said 400. Uh, it says 236. Oh, and the river was 86. No, well, that, that was 70 something, wasn't it? But it's certainly not 400. Okay. Hmm, what are we going to do with that? <sighs> okay, third and last step. Right, go back to the thing. Yes. Uh, I'm going to leave the range where it begins. Yep. 
I need to get the right map up. I'm going to increase. This was how much? 230, and it should be 400. That's almost double. Yeah, I know. I know, that's a lot. So, all right, almost double. Um, 70 off 400 is 330. So we'll add another 300. Which will be 730. That's double. But I don't want to make it double double. Let's try 650. Uh, sh okay. Well... Uh, you've got to play with this vertical exaggeration to get it so that it looks yeah, still not 400 no, I know. well go and double it ok 730 import wrong map import and we should be closer to 400. Oh, we are too. Look at that. Are we still 80 over here? Yes. Hey, you might be getting close. I hope so. Because I tell you what, this is starting to look a little bit more like a river valley now, isn't it? Um, yes. Oh, oh. Oh, that is lovely. And the good thing is, we can see with all these little rough bits along here where, uh, well we could hang on, what are you doing? it doesn't get goes along here because the town of Rothbury is in here well what's all this? well that's another lake, see there's a lake the lakes actually stand out a little bit better now too with your extra vertical exaggeration right, so the reservoir right there Clear as a bell. Shame we don't need that until 1901, but never mind. All right. Uh, vertical distance, 200 there. Yes. And you said how much down the bottom of the thing? 20 metres lower, 181. I think, by George, you've got it. Oh, by George, I might have. Okay, the one that I really need is this one here. Where? <laughs> yeah, this one, not there, not there, not there. Uh, here, here. You think it's here? My God, I don't know. Um, this one, you mean? Well, that looks a little bit more like a an imposing hill, doesn't it? Yep, I think so. Right, well you are going to have so much fun plotting where everything goes on this, aren't you? Yes, well, all I can say is um, I'm glad I can see some of the rivers still. See, you can see the outline of some of them. So that'll give me some bearings. I also understand topographical maps slightly because I was in the Scouts 50 trillion years ago. And um, yeah, all we need now is to save it. <coughs> My God, this is... Well, it, it, it's not flat. That's about all you can say. Um, the moment you start putting roads and trees and rivers and stuff like that on here, it takes on a totally different character. And, you know, colouring fields and, you know, all of that sort of stuff. But at the moment, well, it still looks like that flat map that you first loaded. It does, doesn't it? Ooh, oh, what have we got here? Well, it looks like we've got a river that flows around here. It does, doesn't it? And down here, and down there. Oh, well, that could be exciting. Is there a... Yeah, look, see? Follow the contour lines. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And up here, and up along through here, and up here, and... 
all the way. Oh, wait on, here's Rothley. Here's Rothley Lakes right here. Or well, where were you looking before? I have no idea. I was down here somewhere. Oh, well, that's heartburn. Well, it's given me heartburn, that's for sure. No, this is it. This stands out as, ah, oh, this is beautiful. This is the causeway at Rothley Lakes that I need. That's my starting point. Uh, I can actually see the outline of a lake there and there. And that hill that I wanted, yes, that's it right there. Ooh, what have we got? 210 up to 248, so that's 38 metres. Ah, oh, yes. The very imposing Rothley Crags. Okay. Oh, I'm a lot happier with that. That's, um, somehow got lost. Well, you went down too far, didn't you? Yeah, I went down Scott's Gap is here. This is, um, this is the hill that's at Scott's Gap. Because the railway line comes around this side of that hill and wanders up here somewhere and... You're still going to have fun putting it together. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, lots of triangulation needed. But that's cool because I've got... Mm -hmm, I've got... What have you got? I've got a map, right? I've got this map that I can I can use, yeah, but that's not the map that I want. No. I'll find it. Hang on, I'll find it and bring it up. Because this is the one I'm going to be using over and over and over again. So this, if you are doing British or Scottish maps, is a magical place to get stuff from. The history. History? History? <laughs> <laughs> the, the historical uh, maps that you can access here are absolutely brilliant. Uh, at the moment we're at Tumbleton Lake, which is just to the north of, slowly coming into focus, Rothbury Township in 1892. Uh-huh. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's also um, the other map that I love is the one in 25,937 map, right? So you can find anywhere in um, Great Britain, they say world, I haven't tried world, but in that Great Britain, um, historical maps, and this, this one, if we zoom right in, and there we go, cleans up. It even shows the track layout for the Rothbury railway station in 1890 whenever it was 1892 and the signal positions signal post signal post signal post signal box c for crane signal post all sorts of good stuff and if you zoom out far enough well we can almost see the entire old line down to Usley here, uh, Roughly Lakes there, coming into Scotts Gap, right? And <coughs> anywhere on this we can zoom in to see what the hell happened in those days. So let's have a quick look at Scotts Gap. And there we go. There's the station and all the facilities and everything else at Scotts Gap Junction or Scots Gap, or whatever they wanted to call it. <laughs> and the other really great thing that I like about the National Library of Scotland's map is, look, we can overlay, or this can be overlaid, on top of... ta -da! Satellite imagery. Oh, isn't that cool? So we can see what basically it looks like today and the third great thing that I really like yes we'll just zoom back in yeah, right how long is that platform oh how do I know well you go there click on that yes and then click there right up to the signal box is 71.2 um, meters 
Right. And you can use those measurements all over this place to work out exactly where the hell you're meant to be. And starting up here at the causeway at Rothley Lakes, right, that's my starting point, right, that's, where'd it go, <laughs> I don't know where it went, come on, here, there, there it is, that's the causeway, yep, okay, what do we do with that, well, <laughs> starting there, yep, okay, back to the map, right, you want to know how far that lake goes, where that bridge is, maybe. So start from the middle of the causeway, yep, up to there, uh, 240 metres, yep, uh, double click, oh, okay, 241 metres, right, come here, yes, uh, grab a road, uh, and I, I use these tiny dirt roads, 241 metres, from the middle of the causeway, up, up, 241 metres, is it straight up? It's not at that angle. Isn't it? No. This is what you've got to fiddle around with. This is just slightly off north. Okay. So I've got to fiddle around with 241 metres. Yep. Uh, up to roughly there. Yep. And then... Keep drawing all over the place from that point. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's called triangulation. You know that maths that you thought you'd never need to know at school? It might be useful. Oh, my God. I know. Fun, isn't it? <laughs> all right, that's it. Oh, stick with the contour lines later. At least we could see stuff. Yeah, yeah, you don't often hear people saying stick with the contour line layer because they hate it. But uh, in the map editor, it is your friend. Uh, wow, well this is really high, isn't it? I know, terribly high. Okay, alright, well, yeah, save that, mm -hmm. and um, then spend the next, oh I don't know, couple hundred hours lovingly detailing in this map editor uh, things like rivers mm -hmm. well we can see sort of where they go sort of you can see the channels being carved out here and roughly through here well you'll need to go back to um, either uh, you know, other maps and work out where it actually is but Yep, yep. Uh, what about the lakes that you found? Uh, yeah, here, a couple of lakes. Right, are they on the other map? They sure are. Here we go, zoom in. Yeah, so at Rothbury, you can see those two lakes there, and is it Blackburn Lake? Yes, Blackburn Lake there. If you don't like that map, because it's not giving you enough detail, then maybe uh, that one. 1937 might, so let's flick over to him, and there's a different view, that's got contour lines all over it, it has, it might help make things easier, <laughs> yeah, right, it might, it might, but, you know, using these maps, and whatever historical info that you can round up, you can then place geographical features like lakes, rivers. There's another lake setting setting through here and here. Yep, yep, yep. And work out where the roads go down there and around the hill, and then where the towns go and the trees and the forests and all sorts of things like that. And you can make it all look pretty spiffy. Oh my gosh! And 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 you don't worry about these these bits here what the lines yeah 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 because um if you hit them with the smoothing tool 
right uh, very gentle not much strength maybe a bit bigger watch what happens to them oh yeah they disappear but leave that until much later when you you know almost finished your map and you know been painting and stuff like that because if you hit this area with the smoothing tool you will lose where your lake is meant to go well that's a useful tip thank you you're welcome <laughs> and uh i i originally was going to show you a lot more about detailing this area but oh my gosh it wasn't it, well, it, I tell you what it was. It was tedious video, tedious, very, very tedious, and not at all entertaining. So that ain't going to happen. We're just going to move ahead with um, looking a lot closer at the finished map for Northumbria. And if you want to see that, then please make sure that you like this video. That'd be handy. And it's necessary to watch the next one. But click that subscribe button, ring the bell. And um, I'll see you then, because you'll be very surprised how much this gets transformed. Uh, you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. And that's it from me. So until next time, it's um, Haru from me, and, you know, him too. Okay. Until then, bye for now.